one. We're just going to give everybody a couple uh, minutes to get situated. To get uh, logged on, volume set. All right, do, do you think we should give a couple more minutes or do you think we got uh, got enough of the people here to start? You said that were uh, around 50% uh, uh, registered for the webinar? I think we could probably go ahead and get started. It looks like we have 30 folks in the attendees. Um, we yeah. did get a question from Greg asking um, if the attendees' mics are muted. Um, do you know if there's a setting to allow them. Yes, the the one uh, who controls the webinar has an option to to mute or unmute every attendees and uh, panelists. Yeah, they're all muted by default. Okay, so I, I'm not sure if you want to um, maybe at the end we can unmute and allow. No, you 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 can't unmute people because if you have two, three, four, five people starting to talk at the same time, it will be unbearable and sure, no one no, will no, understand. I, I, I understand, no problem. Um, I just, some, someone had asked, so I thought maybe towards the end, we could, if someone has a direct question, uh, like I said, Greg was asking, um, so maybe uh, at the end, we could allow one at a time, if, if that's preferred. But, but otherwise, it looks like we have uh, 30 attendees ready to go, so maybe we could get started. I think it will be around that, uh, normally, 50% of the people who register will, will participate, so I think we're good to go. All right, awesome. Well, we can get uh, started with introductions. Um, I am Gannon, uh, Gannon Wilder from Paracosm. Kind of head up uh, our, our sales and operations here at Paracosm with the PX80. Um, and also my co-host today, I'd like to introduce, is Jordan. Hi, guys. I'm the specialist for the product vision lidar for Geo Plus, and I will be here today to explain the product to you guys. Awesome. And, uh, and, and just to jump right into and get started, um, the reason that we're excited about uh, combining the PX80 with Vision LiDAR is um, because as a tool, uh, we developed the PX80 to be a fast uh, 3D scanner that's able to capture environments. But one missing piece uh, in the workflow that we've always encountered was once you have uh, the point cloud data and the imagery from our device, what are the best like downstream solutions to uh, enable different workflows? And, uh, and Vision LiDAR is uh, a powerful piece of software that has a lot of different applications that we're gonna go into more today. Um, and really combining both tools, uh, you can get both of them directly from us or from uh, Vision LiDAR. And now it just really enables um, just the whole workflow from capturing data to processing the data. Uh, kind of everything all together. So in the format for today's webinar, we're going to do a little bit of an intro to the PX80 for those that aren't familiar. Um, and then we're going to go into a lot of the different applications and, and uh, functionalities that Vision LiDAR has. So the quick intro, Paracosm, we were founded in 2013. Uh, we specialize in 
SLAM scanning, uh, which means simultaneous localization and mapping, which means uh, our 3D scanning is not limited to a tripod or dependent on GPS systems, like many other LiDAR-based systems, but instead we're tracking the environment based off the features that you see are around you. Um, and so we're using both the LiDAR to track features, we're using the camera to track features. Um, and this means it's a flexible mobile tool that you can walk around environments and it all combines into one stitched point cloud. And we first launched the, the PX80 as our main scanner and, and main product about three years ago. And since then, you know, it's been on projects all over the world. We have resellers in over 30 countries, um, you know, scanning in very cold environments, very warm tropical environments, both indoor and outdoor capabilities. Uh, so this really is a kind of flexible tool for a lot of different type of situations. And then Jordan can give you a little history on GeoPlus. So about us, GeoPlus, uh, we've been in business for over 32 years and we come mainly from the civil engineering and land surveying field. So that's why we have over 20 software developed already. And we are present around the globe with over 34 distributors already. So because of our background with civil engineering and land surveying, there's a lot of features within Vision IDA that will be supported because of that. And about Vision LiDAR itself. So for now, Vision LiDAR is the most comprehensive point cloud software in the industry. As Gannon mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, there's a wide variety of functionalities that can be achieved within Vision LiDAR. And what we're gonna focus on today is really kind of the best intersection between uh, the, the PX80 product line and Vision LiDAR. Um, like we mentioned, uh, like the PX80 can work in both indoor and outdoor environments and Vision LiDAR also has capabilities for a lot of other types of sensors. Um, but some of the areas that we identified are really a great fit for both the PX80 and Vision LiDAR together is uh, you know, creating topography of surfaces, uh, generating those break lines, doing asset detection of like city infrastructure, whether that be like utility poles, power lines, uh, center line on roads, um, curve detection. Other applications are, you know, forestry, detecting trees, uh, generating the height and diameter of the trees. Uh, for buildings, kind of detecting uh, like footprints and creating uh, the overall uh, footprints and models of building environments, as well as a lot of volume analysis, whether that's like stockpiles, um, or other material types, um, quickly extracting those volumes are really easy with the PX80 and Vision Lighter together. So if you've never seen it before, um, the PX80 is a handheld device that you basically kind of just move around slowly. Uh, the speed varies a little bit depending on the type of environment that you're working in. Um, you can go uh, if you go a little bit slower, you capture a little bit more detail. If you walk a little bit faster, um, the, the density is a little bit less, is a little bit more sparse. And you can see our system uh, outputs a colorized point cloud automatically. Basically, the, the PX80 consists of the main aspect is the LiDAR. So we're using the Velodyne VLP-16 LiDAR. We're using an IMU, which detects motion. And we also have a 250 degree camera on the top. And so we're using both the camera, the LiDAR and the IMU to inform our SLAM tracking. Um, so the LiDAR is tracking you know, geometric features. The camera is seeing, uh, is doing feature tracking just from the images and then the IMU is tracking the motion. So this does not require any GPS um, or any other input um, to capture the scans. And every single scan automatically just produces 
a colorized LAS point cloud that you can you know, open directly in Vision LiDAR. Um, and we also output images, so the spherical photos from the top camera. So everything, every single scan, you get a single point cloud of one point cloud and, and then a lot of the photos. Um, another unique aspect is all the processing happens on device. So really, you can walk and scan with the PX80. Once you're done scanning, it, um, the point clouds are produced, and you can open them directly in Vision LiDAR. Another aspect is as you're walking, there is a real-time slam tracking your position. So in the top right corner, you can see that the, little, the line is tracking your motion, and you're seeing the points getting added to the screen. So your operators, while you're in the field, you're seeing real time uh, what is happening on the device. It's just uh, like a downsampled version, not the final version of the point cloud. Just a couple other images. Um, just a couple other views uh, of the data. The data is automatically colorized. So everything you're seeing here is a single scan. Um, so this does not require multiple tripod setups. Um, instead, this is just walking around the exterior of this environment. Um, and you captured all of this in, I think it was like a 11 minute walkthrough. And that is one of the big benefits of a handheld system is you have that speed and time savings compared to a, a terrestrial system, which you know would be maybe 30 to 50 scans, uh, tripod setups, like for this type of environment. Um, so that's a big part of the, the time savings that you guys see with the handheld system. As we mentioned, you know, people are using PX80 in a variety of environments, both indoor and outdoor, uh, interior, like construction sites, more complex, uh, like MEP industrial environments. Um, and exterior environments to generate like stockpiles or forestry. Um, so whether you're in indoor or outdoor spaces, the PX80 uh, tracks uh, pretty well. A couple other examples of like an indoor warehousing environment. And, and this is like really where the SLAM systems uh, can give you a huge uh, time savings because a, a terrestrial system working in such a complex environment um, it's just, as you guys are probably very aware, a, a very kind of slow process. The PX80 also works well in like exterior environments. Um, basically, in the time it takes you to walk a block, um, you know, walk down a street, um, you can capture all the environment of that area. Um, so that's part of the unique part of the flexibility of the system is both kind of for these large areas, you can kind of walk in quickly, or as you're going into more complicated interior environments, you slow down a little bit, but you can still fluidly move through that environment to capture all the details. And you can see this entire area is covered in snow. Last one, uh, last video I'll show here. Um, this was of a, I believe, like some type of um, uh, architecture, uh, historical site. Um, so very kind of steep staircase going down into a tight cave-like environment. Um, so for the scan, they just walked along the main path as they were walking down to this like cavern. Um, and you can see it generated a full colorized point cloud from this, uh, just walk down this environment. And um, yeah, so that's just like a quick intro as far as a lot of the different types of environments and types of ways people are using our system. Um, next, I'll let Jordan kind of talk through, now once you have this data, walking through it um, very quickly with the PX80, what are some of the um, things you can extract from that information? Perfect. 
So now, about the software itself, uh, Vision LiDAR. Uh, first of all, the compatibilities. Uh, will it be possible for me to share my screen directly so I can, uh, I will share my screen so I can show you directly. Yes, let me just uh, cancel mine. All right. Perfect. So just to make sure, okay, there it is. So about the compatibilities with Vision LiDAR. Uh, as mentioned, uh, for Paracos PX80, it comes with one scan, but in Vision LiDAR, you can import uh, any number of scans within the same project. So for example, if you want to do the exterior scan of a building with a PX80, and later on, you want to do the entire scan of a building, you will be able to merge both of them within Vision LiDAR directly. So you have a complete overall of your project and site. Uh, we accept the most most of the formats in the market for now, uh, including the most common such as LAS, LAZ, which is the format in which the scan will come from the PX80, but we are also uh, compatible with other type of formats, such as FLS or Recap, for example. Uh, and also, as I mentioned earlier, because of that, you can combine your PX80 scans with other point cloud, uh, which can be acquired through another LiDAR with another scanner or with photogrammetry. So if you have images on the site and you want to transfer them into point cloud and import them within your PX80 scan, it is possible within Vision LiDAR. So as the use case we saw earlier, we are mainly, as I said at the beginning, coming from the lens surveying, but since, vision, uh, since the LiDAR technology by itself, it's a grid technology which can be used in any type of environment. As we know now, any type of industry is starting to use the LiDAR. It can be within a warehouse, just you can calculate the dimension of your warehouse and make sure if your new equipment can come in or not. Uh, you can go into your forest, just walk around the forest and from that scan, we'll be able to extract all your trees and give you the dimension of your trees. Or as we can see on top of the screen, do your volume computation of your stockpile. So all of that is directly achievable within Vision LiDAR. So now about the functionalities. Vision LiDAR is divided in four main functionalities. Classify, analyze, extract, and share. Classification. Uh, with Vision LiDAR, you can extract, you can classify your point cloud up to 128 classes, uh, most of them being uh, coming from automated function, uh, automated process, such as ground detection or building detection. Uh, we are working on a new AI classification tool, which will come out soon, which will do all that classification by itself. You, don't want, you won't have even to select a process, the software will start doing the classification by itself. Uh, to help you work, on your point cloud, you can isolate your working area. As we can see at the bottom left of the screen, you can isolate it in a 3D area with the clipping box, or you can use a fence tool which will, which will isolate your, work, your point cloud in a 2D perspective. And you have different ways to visualize your data set. Uh, I know that PowerCon is coming soon with the intensity value with their PX80. So that's one of the way you will be able to visualize your data within Vision LiDAR. And next is the cluster detection feature we have in Vision LiDAR. As you can see on the screen right now, once the ground is detected, we can simply turn it off to create floating elements from which the software will be able to do, to, to do some grouping of logical points, which will create boxes in, uh, around those uh, group of points. And from the filter within the menu, you will be able to classify by batch all the similar type of object. So all your cars can be selected at once and classified at once. Then you will have the possibility to turn that, uh, la that layer, even though it's a class, to be precise, can be turned off so you won't see the car anymore within your project. So by using that tool, you have a way to clean and quickly classify some same type of object within your project. 
all of that can be exported within a library. Uh, you can save those boxes within a library to reuse them in other projects. And you have also the possibility to export in different format. Uh, spherical images. Vision, in Vision Ida, you can uh, upload your spherical images directly from your project to your project, uh, giving you the possibility, to, the possibility to display the images on top of your point cloud. As you can see now on the screen, there's a lot of areas which were not acquired by the scanner, which is normal. If you have an object in the way, like a car, everything behind that object won't be acquired by the scanner. So when you do vectorization or classification, having the possibility to add on top of that some photo will help you greatly uh, doing producing your deliverable and getting better results. Uh, next part is the analyze part of Vision Analyzer. Uh, so the software comes with a powerful analysis tool which allows you to detect the differences between your scan and the plane, as we can see at the top of the screen. So you can colorize by distance your point cloud from that plane. You can compare it to a surface, as we can see at the bottom left of the screen with that uh, silo. So we created a cylinder from that point cloud, and we're comparing the point cloud with the surface the cylinder created. And as you can see in blue and red, this is the area on which there's any damages on the structure itself. So with Vision LiDAR, you have the possibility to, to do some monitoring over your building or infrastructure, such as bridges and others, as we can see at the bottom right of the screen. So the one on, uh, the one at the bottom right, it's a multi-date analysis. So we took a scan at the first point, I think it was before winter, and we took another one after winter. And we can just do a comparison of both scans and we can see the difference between both of them. So we can locate exactly where the damage has occurred during the winter on the infrastructures. And from that, you will be able, you will have the possibility to create PDF report, which can be shared or delivered to your client directly. Next one is the civil module. As I said, we come from civil engineering and land surveying. So we kept that background within Vision LiDAR which give you the possibility to create your surface on stockpile, to create DTM, uh, to produce contour map, and to do some volume computation directly within the Vision LiDAR. Next one is the extraction part of Vision LiDAR. And like for most of you, I'm certain that one of the main thing you want to achieve with your scan is to extract the features of your scan itself on the, uh, in the environment. So basically by using corridors and alignment, we can create point, line, and surfaces to extract the geometry directly within your point cloud. So as we can see on the top of the screen, we created a corridor, and from that corridor, we asked the software to locate for us all the road marking automatically. As mentioned earlier, we, can, we do tree detection, which can be seen at the bottom left of the screen. So anything, any trees, from which we can see the trunk, which is greatly achieved with the PX80, you will have the possibility to use the tree detection feature, which will automatically extract your trees for you. Once the tree is extracted, it will create a 3D object, which can be imported within other software, such as Revit, for example. And you will have a list, which will give you all the dim dimension of the tree, meaning you will have the dimension for the trunk height, and the diameter at breast height. You will also have the height of the tree and the diameter of the crown. Next one in extraction is our catenary detection feature. In this one, you can automatically extract your catenaries by batch or individually. The only thing you have to do is just click a starting point and the software will be able to detect for you and vectorize them. Once the vectorization and classification is done, you will have access to the clash detection feature, which can be a lot of use for hydro lines, for electric lines. Like for us in Quebec with Hydro Quebec, they have to monitor which trees mostly in the forest or which elements are too close to the power line in case of uh, accident or weather, bad weather. They want to make sure which element can fall down on the cable. So by using the, the clashing tool with the clashing 
the clash detection tool within Vision LiDAR, you will be able to colorize and identify all the elements within a specific, a specified radius. So you know where, as you can see now, in it was in pink on the screen, so we'll let it run another time. But it will colorize you all the points within your point cloud which are too close to your polar line. So you can know exactly where to go and intervene to fix the issue before it happens. So it won't be long. Uh, also, in the meantime, as we can see now, every vectorization achieved within Vision LiDAR, it's exportable to your CAD software. So as you can see on the screen now, everything in pink, it's all the point where which were too close to the pole line. So if you have to cut down trees, you know exactly where to go. Uh, the next one is the road by section features. So, uh, so as you can see on this screen right now, this is what you can have directly within your CAD software. To achieve this result, we have uh, developed an automatic way to extract your features. Basically, you will create an alignment, and by using that alignment, we will edit a template, which the software will use to reproduce all along the way of the alignment. Then you can go locally to readjust the template of a section to make sure it fits your reality. So you can vectorize your dots, your chains, and lines directly from that module. And you can also create surfaces within Vision LiDAR. And as you can see on the screen now, once the vectorization is done, you can export it to a CAD software and you have your 3D plan or model with vectors directly draw for you within your CAD. Next one is the building. Jordan, uh, yes? just since you mentioned the, the CAD, one of the questions was about um, how it interacts with like MicroStation or AutoCAD. We go with, we are compatible with, uh, but basically at first we can export in DXF format, which is supported by most of the CAD software. Also in the LiDAR Ultimate version, you have the possibility to have a plugin which is installed directly within your CAD. Uh, I will go back at that and, uh, later on on the slide, but you have a possibility to have access to the database of Vision LiDAR directly from your CAD, which, can, which is available for MicroStation, AutoCAD and BruceCAD. Okay. Uh, about BIM itself, so in Vision LiDAR, you can modelize your building directly. Uh, for now, you can modelize uh, semi automatically your building in Vision LiDAR, meaning, as we can see right now in the screen, what I did is I just modelized myself the first floor which was done semi-automatically by the software. And then I just asked the software to reproduce that floor all the way to the top of the building, so which can speed up the process. If you have a 100 floor building to digitalize, being able to copy paste all the level at once will speed up your process. Uh, same thing, you have the possibility to create section. So if you want to make sure you're creating your level at the proper place, you can always create section to have a better view of the elements within your building. Uh, you have also access to a library of objects, which include doors, windows, and opening. Uh, those objects can be saved, as can, we can see right now on the screen, as a group object, meaning that once you save that object, the dimension and parameters of that object, when you want to insert it back within, the, uh, within your building, you don't have to redraw everything. You just pick the localization and select the model, and the software will place that model automatically for you at the proper place. A great thing is if you always use the same type of windows or same type of doors uh, dimension wise, you can save those opening, those objects and reuse them in future projects. So you don't have to recreate them every time. Also, we're following the hierarchical structure of a beam, which means we are compatible with IFC. We have an option to export in IFC, all the things you have done within Vision LiDAR. So when you open to Revit, you have a possibility to just export to IFC from Vision LiDAR and open the IFC within your Revit software or any other software. And you can also share cuts with AutoCAD in recap format. Also, if you have, uh, for some reason, you have objects, doors, and windows which were created in other projects and 
in IFC format, you have the possibility to import those, uh, those objects within Vision LiDAR also. Next one is the object detection feature in Vision LiDAR. This one is totally based on artificial intelligence. How it works, the user will identify an object. Same story as previously, but this object can be saved in the library. So if you have to find the same object in different projects, you don't have to isolate or identify it every time. You just select in your database the object and the software we will use as object as a reference and scan and check for within your scan all, all, the, point, all the points which resemble your object. And it will give you a list of cinema objects. It will draw a box, as we can see right now, around the objects. So it won't be long. So it starts drawing boxes around the objects to let you know he found the object for you. So all we did was just to identify that beginning, the object we want the software to look for, and the software will do the rest for you. Uh, in the list, you have a compatibility percentage given to you. So you can check how precise the object find by the software it is from the object you determine in the first place. So the more complex the object is, the easier it's for the software to recognize and find the similar object. So coming back to, uh, the, uh, to the CADs, so we go to the last part of Vision LiDAR, which is the sharing portion of it. Obviously, everything you do within Vision LiDAR needs to be, most of the time, exported to other software or platform for the, for the final touch of your deliverable. So for CADs, as I mentioned earlier, in Vision LiDAR, in one of the versions of Vision LiDAR, you have a possibility to get a plugin, which is installed directly into your CAD software. So BrisCAD, uh, MicroStation, and AutoCAD. And from that plugin, you have a possibility to access and interrogate the Vision LiDAR database of your project. As we can see now on the screen, you do also have a possibility to draw in real time from your Vision LiDAR to your CAD. So everything which is done right now on the Vision LiDAR software, it's reproduced on the CAD software. And as soon as you click Saved, all the line will be drawn for you. So you can do a real-time extraction feature, and you can use the CAD as a quality control tool. Also, we use feature codes within Vision LiDAR. So by synchronizing the feature codes, the list of feature codes between the CAD software and Vision LiDAR, when you do your importation from Vision LiDAR, the object will, will retain your will maintain your standards of drawing, which means it will keep it will keep the way you do the you do the drawing. So color, size of line, symbology, everything will be kept for you right away. Uh, next one is Vision LiDAR 365. Uh, as we noticed recently, more and more clients are with asking us if it's possible for them to share their, pro their project online with their client or other people, sometimes other colleagues. You can have an office in New York and another one in Vegas, and sometimes sending huge, huge data, meaning a lot of gigabytes and gigabytes of point clouds can be painful and time consuming. So to allow you to speed up the process, we have, we have Vision LiDAR 365 which is an online platform to share your projects. I see we have a question maybe. Uh, also, everything you have extracted within Vision LiDAR, all the vectorization done, all the annotation measurements you, you took within Vision LiDAR can be exported directly within the Vision LiDAR 365 project. So as you can see right now on the screen, you can have access to your point cloud, to the images, and even a map to localize where you are. They will have the possibility to navigate through the projects. So they will have the possibility to take measurements and put annotation, or even add hyperlinks. Uh, the meaning of that, it's allow, allow your clients to have a, con a kind of control over the project. Or even if you have a project ma uh, manager which is in the office, and you have your technician on, on site. So the technician can do the data acquisition and upload it directly to Vision LiDAR 365, and the project manager can double check if everything went well during the acquisition. If not, he can always put annotation exactly where if an issue is and send it back and just save it. Then the technician on site will just will have access to all that information 
and have the possibility to retake the data, do another acquisition or to fix any issue possible. Same thing, if you have a street light which is burned for a city-wise perspective, you can locate where the issue is and then the employee of the, uh, of the town can go directly and know exactly where to intervene to change the traffic light, for example. Uh, next one, it's our plugin for AutoCAD map. So now you have a possibility within your CAD software to have access to Vision Radar 365. So you have the same access to the window. You, are, you can see your images, your vectorization achieved, the point cloud, and even have a map which can be used to navigate and it's synchronized with your CAD software. So when you move within Vision Radar 365, it will move within your CAD software. Uh, so you can synchronize the view. Also, you can extract point coordinates and vectors directly from Vision Radar 365 to AutoCAD map, which means by simply clicking a point within the Vision Radar 365 window within your CAD software, our plugin will, will give a coordinate of a point and create it directly within your CAD. For example, if you want to do a footprint, but you don't want to do everything within Vision Radar directly, you can just create even, even better than that. For example, you don't have Vision LiDAR yourself, but you have a CAD software. You can ask the, the person who will do the scan to save it into Vision LiDAR 365. Then when you have access to Vision LiDAR 365, even though you don't have Vision LiDAR, you will be able to produce your footprint. You just click on the screen, it will import the four corners of your building, and then within your CAD software, you will be able to draw the line between those four corners and create the footprint of your building. So this is another tool which can be used for people who don't need Vision LiDAR, but need to do some work on it on point clouds. So it's another way to go around and achieve all everything you need to be done with your point cloud information. And last one is vision blurring. Uh, it's more and more requested by governments mostly to blur faces and license plates, mostly for confidentiality purposes. So with vision blurring, you can automatically blur faces and license plate automatically by the software. And we can work on both standard and spherical images so you can remain low compliant when you publish online or publicly your images. Everything is done by automatic batch processing. So you have a step-by-step -step feature which helps you out doing your the processing of the images. And then once the project is created, you just click process and the software will process all the images within your folder. It can be 10, it can be 1,000, doesn't matter. Once it's done, before publishing your edited images online or AutoCAD map, for example, you will have access to quick quality insurance tool. Basically, it's a magnifying tool that we can see here on top of the screen, on the middle of the screen. So even though on the image itself, we don't see the license plate, once the image is processed, you can use that tool to see what was blurred to make sure everything is okay. Once you show the result, you can just click saved and your image will be saved and blurred. And no one will have access to what was blurred under that. Now for the new features of Vision LiDAR 2020. Uh, first one is the automatic classification from Arial data. So by using your returns, we are able to filter your data set and distribute your point cloud within building in gray, vegetation in green, and ground in orange, as we can see on the screen. On top of that, you will be able to add your PX80 scan to have a complete scan of your environment to work with. Same thing about volume computation. So before I go further with volume computation, I need to say something about the PX80, which is to me amazing in the GeoSlam industry. Most of the clients who use SLAM previously always have the same issue of processing the, their data because of a lack of precision, which is not the case anymore with the PX80. With the precision of the PX80 being around one centimeter, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ganon, but thanks to the precision of the PX80, you can achieve the same type of results as you will do with a terrestrial scan. So thanks to that, when you do your volume computation, you are using a PX80 scan, you will, you will achieve great results. So the one we see on screen right now, it's a multi-tate volume computation. It's a cliff from which some material was excavated from. 
And what we do, we just scan the same place at two different times of, uh, of the year. The first one, if I recall correctly, was in April, and the second one was in September of the same year. And by combining the two scans together, the software is able to give us the exact amount of volume of material which was excavated from the site. You have some parameters which is, are adjustable, so to make sure when you do your volume computation, it goes accordingly to the type of scan you're using. And the result can be displayed in the heat map, so you can see exactly where most of the material were dig or excavated from. All of that can be published in a PDF report, so you can share that report with people also. Next one is the point cloud extraction from photo. So now in Vision LiDAR, if you have imagery, that, uh, aerial or terrestrial photos, you can extract from those photos a colorized point cloud, which can be then used to do your analysis, your extraction directly from that. Uh, the next three slides are about three new uh, feature extraction components that we included in Vision LiDAR 2020. Uh, the, this one is the new dynamic edge detection. So now in Vision LiDAR, you can vectorize automatically for you your edges and curves. For curves, for example, as you can see on the screen, when you, before you do the extraction, you can input, as we can see here, a feature code. So when uh, the extraction is done, your lines will be already identified as, as top and bottom of curve. You can create your chains automatically from the detection and export that to your CAD.js software. Uh, same apply to the crash barrier detection. Once the vectorization is done, you can export that to your CAD software. Uh, the chain are created by following uh, an, uh, a path. So mostly for the crash barrier, we will use the path of a camera as a reference to let know the software where to start from and where to go or where to finish for the extraction. As, I, as you can see on the screen, the crash barrier is automatically vectorized for you. Uh, next one is the road marking detection. This one use intensity feature. So with your PIX80 scan, once you have the uh, intensity value uh, acquired, you will have the possibility to extract right away your road marking in batch or individually. Create your chains as the previous two features, uh, extraction features, and export that to your CAD.js software. Next one is the viewing mode. So in Vision LiDAR, we use to have a perspective mode where, which can be seen at the bottom of the screen. Which is great to see the depth within, uh, within your point cloud. Unfortunately, when you want to do some beam, being in perspective mode will most of the time make you click at the wrong place. You think you're clicking on the corner, but in reality, you're clicking on the point below, which will make you work longer to, pre to produce your BIM uh, model. But that's why now we have the auto mode, as we can see on the, bottom, on the top of the screen. As you can see now, the auto mode, you don't see the depth anymore. It keeps everything straight. So thanks to that, it will simplify your BIM generation. S uh, same thing, when you do some feature extraction, switching to uh, auto mode can help you greatly, mostly for pause extraction, make sure you're clicking on the right spot. Uh, next one is the new database format of Vision LiDAR. Uh, for Vision LiDAR 2020, we switched to SQL Lite base for the database, which allow now multiple users working on the same project at once. So as you can see on the screen now, on the left, we're doing the ground extraction, when on the right, we're doing the curb extraction. So that means for you guys, if you have two, three technicians, so if Instead of having only one working on the project while the two others have nothing to do, you can split your scan in two, three, four different parts and make them work all together at the same time uh, on each part of your scan. So you can speed up the production of all your extraction and deliverable right away from that. And everything extracted by each of your technicians will be saved within the same project. So you have everything located at the same place for the results. Uh, the next one is the new dynamic cursor and eraser. As you can see on the top of the screen now, with Vision LiDAR, you have the possibility to detect the edges. 
So when you do your feature extraction or your beam uh, generation, you can, by using the cursor, make sure you're clicking exactly where you're supposed to click, which will give you better results for your 3D modeling or your, fit, your extract, the extraction of your features. Also, we come to notice that when you do that acquisition, sometimes you have some elements you want to extract which are below uh, other elements. Uh, like example, in a beam uh, uh, idea, you can have the floor which can obstruct some elements just below it. Or as we can see right now on the screen, sometimes you want to have access to information which are blocked by point on top of them. So with the new eraser, you have a possibility to delete those points, mostly to be more precise, to hide those points temporarily which will give you access to the points below them and allow you to do your feature extraction. Once you're done, you have a possibility to display them back again on screen. So it's a nice tool to help you navigate through your project and give you access to the information you want to extract. So we give back the control to Ganon for the end of the presentation. Yeah, and if you could just keep sharing your screen, it's the final slide. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the, um, the exciting thing with everything like you see here is uh, now really it's both the scanner and the software to kind of deliver the whole end-to-end -end solution. So instead of having to piece together all the pieces yourself, um, this really just kind of fits everything together uh, really well. Uh, a big benefit is the reduction in uh, time in the field. Um, so whether previously you were doing a lot of hand measurements, taking like GPS points and measurements or using terrestrial systems, um, the mobile system is, is really faster than both like manual measurements and terrestrial. And then instead of, you know, translating your field notes, uh, into like a CAD software back in the office, using the vision lighter to, uh, extract everything you need, which just really speeds up the entire process. Um, even more so than if you already had a point cloud and then you're trying to just manually uh, measure everything. Uh, really with both our tools together, it's a really flexible uh, tool set for a variety of projects, whether you're working on uh, like street environments, whether you're working with like topography or, or volume, extracting that information, working more like tree situations. Um, so really there's a lot of different um, use cases that can work. I think Jordan, one of the, the questions was about um, which which features are included in which licenses because because you guys do have a couple of different tiers. Yeah. So and so if you guys come to us afterwards, we can probably break it down in more detail. But can you give a brief overview about that, Jordan? Uh, basically, basically, if you go to JPLUS website, you have within the Vision Lidar section the three different versions of the software which is available for now and you have the possibility to check everything which is included in them but to make a quick uh, overview of it the main difference between uh, the standard version and the premium and ultimate is that with the standard version is really a classification tool mostly you will have access to a couple of um, extraction but most of it will be done manually if you want to access to most of the automatic features within Vision LiDAR, you have to go with the premium version of it. And the ultimate version of Vision LiDAR gives you access to the plugin directly within your CAD. So you don't have to do any export in the DXF format, for example, but instead you can use the plugin within your CAD software to access the database and import all your extracted feature right away. Okay. And then the, and then the web, the web license, the Web360, that's a, a separate license than the, the main exactly. on-device uh, license. Exactly, Vision, uh, Vision LiDAR 365 is a comp complementary software uh, such as Vision, uh, Vision Blurring. So it's just on top, Vision for Vision LiDAR 365 is uh, on top of Vision LiDAR itself. Okay, awesome. Um, I will stop the sharing for you so you can come back to control the presentation and I will, also, so I see also that we received some questions. So I will let you finish the presentation and then if you want, we can go to the question period at the end. 
yeah, we, we could just throw up the final slide just for contact information for everyone, and then let's start going through those uh, through those questions. Um, another question was about uh, getting tree heights. Yeah, that's um, the one I have on screen for now. Okay. So to get tree heights and DBH measurement, we have to isolate each individual tree separately. No, the software do it for you. So basically, what you do, uh, let's say for example you are in an urban area. You can draw a fence tool around the trees, so it will be faster for the software to process the information instead of going through all the data set. But what you have to do is just click on Analyze Tree. It's a functionality within Vision LiDAR. And the, the software will scan your project and create trees for you. So all the trees are created by the software itself. So you have one tree or you have 10 trees, doesn't matter, the software will identify all of them and create a tree and a physical object, a numeric object of the tree for, from which you will have access to all the information of measurement. So if you, if you want uh, later on, I can, uh, I can share my screen again and show you directly within Vision LiDAR. And, and does that function similarly with uh, like utility poles? That extraction is a kind of exactly the same. The same it, it, it is the same pro, the same uh, the same process, the same idea. So you don't have to do anything yourself. It, you just ask the software to locate all the cylinder or all the pole for you or all the trees for you. Mm -hmm. That's the job of the software to look for your data set and find for you all those elements and extract them for you. That's the point of vision like that, is to have most of the job done automatically for you. So if I have to give you a percentage, I would say like 80 to 90% of the job that can be achieved with Vision LiDAR will be done by the software itself. Most of the time, if this 90% of, uh, if the 90% of the process is done automatically, the only thing you have to do is just most of the time set up some parameters and, or click a starting point. And then the software do everything for you. In the 10, 15 percentage left, most of it uh, for the manual part of Vision LiDAR, most of it is goes to quality control. So everything which is done by the software, which suggests most of the time but to just do a quick overview of everything extracted by the software, just to make sure that the results are good for you. But for most of extraction you saw uh, in the presentation today, most of it is done by the software. You don't have to do anything manually. Yeah, and I guess that goes also with, um, you know, similar with the PX80 is once you scan, you get to skip a lot of the registration steps because uh, with the SLAM system, uh, the algorithm is automatically stitching everything together. Um, so you often don't have to do registration until you start breaking up scans into multiple scans as you do like really large projects. Um, so yeah, a lot of times it's scan with the PX80, wait for that to automatically process, open up in Vision LiDAR, set up your parameters that you want, wait for that a couple minutes, um, and then you know do the QA at the end. Exactly. So I already did some uh, tests with uh, PX80 data set for uh, trees, and it works amazingly well. As I mentioned at, the, at some point at the beginning of my presentation, it's the great quality of precision of a PX80 for GeoSlam, which is better than any other one I saw on the market so far. So thanks to the precision of a PX80, you can, the software is possible to extract all those information automatically for you. And another question was more related to uh, the, the street scanning type projects um, and like how well you can see the markings on the street. Um, I'll, I can answer this from the, the PX80 perspective. Uh, it does produce you know, the colorized point clouds. How well the markings are seen on the street uh, varies based off of um, how close you are. Like the colorization is better like in like the immediate area kind of in front of you as you're walking over say a road or a sidewalk area. As it gets further away, like a small markings on the sidewalk or road are not as um, apparent. So really, um, if you are wanting to see the, the markings on the street, um, you would want to be closer to it. And then for the one specific feature from uh, Vision LiDAR for actually extracting, if, if you're talking about like, uh, like road lines, um, that they have that capacity to actually automatically extract the road lines. Uh, they just need the intensity uh, data from us. I um, mean, that's something that we plan on releasing within a, uh, like a month or month and a half. Um, so soon we should have that intensity data. 
so that automatic extraction of road lines can actually happen automatically in Vision Lighter. Okay, so I see also we have a new question about the edge detection feature. So I will answer first of all for the last part of the question. Within Vision LiDAR, you can export in uh, DigSafe, Shapefile, GeoJSON, KML for most of the feature extracted. So no matter what feature you're looking for, those four formats will be available most of the time for, extra for, for exportation, which include the edge detection. Uh, second of all, for the edge detection, I will be honest with you. If you want the edge to be extracted automatically and give you a good result, most of the time we ask you to run a noise detection. But you have, well, I have to say that in the new version of Vision LiDAR uh, for 2020, we implemented a, a way to correct the, extract, the extracted curb. So for example, if there's too much noise around your curb, mostly due to the grass, and your curb in Z value doesn't really follow the curb, we have an option within a Vision LiDAR to force a fit of the curb. So the curb can be corrected within Vision LiDAR directly to follow properly uh, your, your curb within your project. About the curb let down, uh, it will depend of the parameters. So it's something which is achievable. I already done it with some data set. I know we can follow the curb exactly uh, for the for the let down, but the result will greatly depend on the parameters and the precision of your scan. So if you're using the PX80, it will work well if you if the PX80 was close enough to to the curb when you did the extraction. But if you're trying to extract a curb from a PX80 scan which was taken at the 80 meters limits of the scanner, obviously it won't work. So it really depends on the quality of acquisition. So I want to go back to what uh, Ganon sent said at the beginning of the presentation, which is, I think, the key in LiDAR in general, and mostly for SLAM, is the data acquisition. By using a GeoSLAM and the PIX80 specifically, you can achieve uh, a scan in 15 to 30, minute, 30 minutes compared to hours and hours of a terrestrial scan. My goal with that is take your time. If you're taking five more minutes because you're, you're working slower than usual, do it. You will just take five more minutes compared to the terrestrial scan. You will save hours of data acquisition and you will have a great quality of data to work with. The, bet the better the quality of the data, the more precise the quality of the data, the easier it will be for the software to extract everything for you automatically and give you good and best result possible. One other uh, uh, question was about loop closure um yes loop closure is recommended to, to get the best quality scan especially over uh, large distances it's not as uh necessary for a lot of like interior applications if it's not a very uh, big scan but as you're doing really big scans coming back and doing a loop is uh recommended um, and also one thing that um uh, vision lidar enables is the ability to add um control points to a scan. Uh, so if you already have known uh, visible markers for, uh, for targets in the field that are already surveyed or, or visible survey points, um, you can add those to your scan data to georeference your scan in Vision Lighter. So that's another uh, benefit is adding those kind of survey points. I'm just looking at, at, at the chat if we had any other questions um, from people we want we want to get to. Were there any other questions that, that we missed or other people uh, have? So in case we missed uh, your question, don't hesitate. To, let, to, to repeat the question in case we forgot something. Okay. Yeah, and then this will be uh, recorded, so we'll send out a link to everyone um, after this so you guys can have this on file. Um, if you guys have other uh, questions, 
you can contact either uh, GeoPlus or Paracosm directly. Uh, we'd be happy to kind of get you more information on pricing, functionality, um, all, all those things. And keep in mind, uh, as you said, the Patty is a great software. Keep in mind that the main advantage of Vision LiDAR compared to other type of software, it is a complete solution. Most of the deliverable you're looking to produce can be achieved with only Vision LiDAR. So you can save a lot of money by not having to purchase license for other software just because the software just do part of the job. With Vision LiDAR, you can do everything until you have to go to your CAD to do your technical drawing. So from the scan itself, so from the data acquisition to the deliverable, you only have one software to use. So also, which means for you guys, you don't have to learn four, five, six different software and how to operate them. You have only one platform to do everything for you. And thanks to the quality of the PX80, you can have a quick acquisition of data done in matters of as I, I, I used to do a webinar with CDIS, one of the distributors of uh, Paracos in France, and they show us some scans of university which took four hours with a terrestrial scan and compare, compare it to the one of Paracosm with a PX80 achieved in 30 minutes. And the, res, the result was astounding. The precision of the quality of the output coming from the PX80 can rivalize with terrestrial scan. Maybe not the most expensive one at 100 or 2 or $1 million, obviously, but for most of the market that we're, and most of the clients we're working with, it's a great tool which gives you a great result of data which can be worked within Vision LiDAR to produce your deliverable and your results right away. Awesome. So yeah, so we're, we're really excited about uh, being able to have both together. Um, uh, you know, combining the hardware and software solution, it just gives it like a nice all-in-one package uh, for our, all our customers. Um, so definitely reach out to us after this uh, webinar um, with any other questions. And you definitely want to thank everyone for attending today. Thank you guys for joining us and allowing us to present our products. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.